Good afternoon, I'm Victoria Fritz in the Business News this hour. The Bank of England responds to disappointing figures on wage growth by cutting their forecast on earnings in half. They're now predicting an average rise of 1.25% this year. The Financial Conduct Authority has opened 227 investigations since April into the way loans and other forms of credit are advertised to potential customers. Four out of five of these were digital promotions targeting individuals via websites, emails and text messages. And the security firm G4S has reported pre-tax profits of £85 million today compared with the £94 million loss last year. Earlier this year, G4S had to pay the government more than £100 million to settle a dispute over overcharging on contracts to tag offenders. Good afternoon. Let's start with that big fall in unemployment. The figures from the Office for National Statistics this morning said that the number of people out of work in the three months to June have fallen by 132,000 people to stand at 2.08 million people. That means that the headline rate of unemployment has now fallen to 6.4% of the workforce. That's the lowest since 2008 before the financial crisis struck. It sounds very promising, but there is always a but. Growth in average weekly earnings is the lowest it's been for 13 years, averaging just 0.6% over the past three months compared to the same figure a year ago. That's if you exclude bonuses. Those very low figures on wage increases have led the Bank of England Governor, Mark Carney, to halve his forecast for wage growth this year. The Governor made it very clear that the bank will be watching wages closely before a potential rise in interest rates. In light of the heightened uncertainty about the current degree of slack, the committee will be placing particular importance on the prospective paths for wages and unit labour costs. To be clear, the MPC does not have a particular threshold for wage growth, rather will continue to monitor a broad range of data to assess overall inflationary pressures and the timing of the first increase in bank rate. So there we go. What should we be reading into that? Well, earlier I spoke to Rob Wood. He's the chief economist at Berenberg Bank to get a sense of when and by how much we can expect interest rates to rise. Well, the Bank of England is saying today that they think they will increase interest rates by a quarter of a point, a quarter of a percentage point in next February and then slightly less than that every three months for the following two or three years. Personally, I think there's a bit of a risk that they move before that. But today, uh, the Bank of England was trying to say, uh, it's OK, wage growth is still weak and we're not going to hike rates uh, that soon if wage growth remains very low. That's Rob Wood there. Uh, let's check in with the market, see what's going on at the moment. And while the pound has fallen today against the dollar, the prospect of a later than expected interest rate rise has given shares on the FTSE a little bit of a lift. Um, when you look at Brent crude, they've actually fallen to their lowest level, $103 a barrel, or roughly there, in about nine months. Well, it's because there's perhaps too much oil because there's fracking going on in the US and that means a huge extra increase in production and a subsequent slide in prices. $103 a barrel for a barrel of Brent crude oil. That's it for me. I'll have more in an hour's time. I'll